uh, everybody knows uh, the mayor. Uh, the mayor's gathered up uh, a group of local business people. Uh, Butch, for example, uh, owns a marina. Terry, a shrimp boat. Floyd, oyster fisherman. And Patty has a convenience store. Uh, Chris is the owner of the, the, the bait shop. Uh, and so we were just talking about the economic impact that this has had. And, and just to give you a, a sense of perspective, you know, Terry's been shrimping uh, out here for 46 years. His grandfather did it before him. Uh, and right now, things are completely shut off for him. Uh, Floyd, his, he leases the oyster beds uh, from the state. The state now, obviously, and properly so, has said you can't be pulling seafood out of, out of these waters right now. He's got oil that's starting to seep in into these oil, uh, oyster beds where he's got leases. Uh, and as a consequence, boys trying to figure out how long this damage is going to last. <coughs> I'm a fourth generation, and I got a son in the fifth generation. So, you know, so we've been in this, some of these have been in this time of independent for 100 years. Butch was talking about uh, the marina and making the point that uh, these three, four months are basically when all the business comes down. And normally, it, he, all his slips would be full right now. It sounds like about uh, only a third of them full. It may get worse from there. Uh, so right now, uh, Butch isn't taking a salary so he can pay his employees, but he doesn't know how long that's going to last. Then you got Patty, uh, who uh, owns a convenience store. Obviously, that store is dependent on uh, these guys. The boats coming in, filling up with gas, buying ice, buying soft drinks. Uh, so she's down 85% uh, on her business right now. So, so this is just a sampling of what's happening out here. And part of what we talked about was what we can do to prevent oil from coming into these areas. Part of what we talked about is, in terms of the relief effort, can we deploy folks who've got boats here to help save their livelihoods right where they are, as opposed to having to go to other places and so I'm going to ask Admiral Allen to make sure that he's uh, looking at where people are being deployed, where vessels are being deployed, to make sure the people who know the waters best end up in, uh, being hired there. And the final thing is we've got to talk about uh, what we talked about up in uh, New Orleans, which is are we making sure that claims are being processed effectively. Uh, and right now, after that initial $5,000 check that BP wrote. Uh, the claim center has been taking in claims, but it sounds based on what uh, uh, I'm hearing that there's a lot of process, but not much actual action. Uh, and so we're going to see if we can uh, do something better on that. But but the main point I think I want to make, uh, Mayor, feel free to chime in on this, is you know, these are communities that uh, have uh, had a way of life for generations. What people are concerned about right now is not just uh, the damage done in the short term, because these are some tough folks. They've been through hurricanes, you know, butch and low, you know, low prices. They have high, high uh, costs. Terry, Terry was talking about how you know, if the walls stay up on the on, uh, on building around here, hurricane comes, you wash out the mud, and a week later, everybody's back in business. So. So these are folks who are who are used to hardship and know how to deal with it. But what they're concerned about right now is, you know, is, is this going to have a lasting impact that they can't recover from? And that's why that the rest of the federal team is so committed to making sure that everything that can be done will be done. This is going to be bad no matter what we do. But we can hopefully minimize the damage, but it requires good coordination between the state, federal, and local. And it requires BP to make sure that, as I said, up in New Orleans, folks aren't getting nickels and dimes. And that we're doing what we need to do early to prevent the 
the worst case scenario can happen late. Okay. Mr. Mayor, anything you want to add? Well, again, you know, the main concern is to block these five passes that we talked about. Uh, the barges are available, Admiral, right there, and all along the coast, from uh, Venice to uh, Harvey Canal, all the way back to Homer. Uh, they're standing by, and hopefully we can get the president to get on BP between go to you guys so we can put some barges there temporarily uh, to block these passes so we can save, um, you know, our neighboring parish, Lafourche Parish, St. Charles Parish, Orleans Parish, Jefferson Parish, uh, Clackamas Parish, and, and just in Jefferson Parish where we live at. If we can block the five passes right now, these fishermen can tell you that we can save to continue saving the rest of the two million acres of oyster reefs. We have two billion dollars worth of seafood that comes out behind me right in this estuary. Two billion dollars worth. We have a billion dollars of recreational license, recreational fishing that generates to the marinas, to, to all the stores, all the way across Louisiana. But these guys, this woman here with the convenience store, if we lose the estuaries in the back, we history. And they'll tell you that. We born and raised, our grandfathers, grandmothers, we made a living right here behind us. There's, there's no reason why this shrimp boat should be tied up. It ought to have skimmers on it to make sure that we can block the oil until we put these booms. And I'm asking you to. We're going to work. Push now, to do it. The, the, uh, last week when I was talking to the mayor, uh, you know, we started choking up just talking about the fact that out of his own pocket, he was having to provide some help and some loans to his, his buddies, to fishermen, mm -hmm. folks in the area. That's what we should have, should be able to prevent. There's oil washing in, but people can help each other. And the company that's responsible can make sure that it's responding quickly and effectively. Mayor told me that story. Uh, it was, I think, an example of what's happening all across this Gulf Coast. And it's going to be multiplied, not just in Louisiana, but in Alabama, Mississippi, Florida. Uh, there are small communities like this all across the Gulf. And they've got to make sure that, uh, that their voice is being heard day in, day out. And, know that they've got a fierce advocate in uh, at Thad Allen, but, but I wanted you to know that behind Thad Allen stands the President of the United States. Yes, sir. And, right. and like I said, uh, it, 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 since the last time we've been here, yeah, the Coast Guard is under the yeah. And I want you to know that you guys are really working 24 hours for us, and they did push BP. And, and like I said, uh, uh, you know, I'm very emotional because I'm still giving uh, you know, I'm not going to cut the water off. I'm not going to cut the electricity off. And I'm not going to cut the gas off. I have one of the businesses right now that has a $5,200 electricity bill. And I'm calling energy to make sure not to cut them off. Um, when you business people come up to you and say, it's time to help, it's not easy. And I, I, Patty can tell you, I, night before last, I, I told her that I'm going to keep you strong and I'm going to try to bring you more business. Which calls me, hey, we're going to need more boats, get some more vessel of opportunities. He's fighting to save his oysters. I'm trying to keep Grand Isle alive to try to get tourists. I opened the beach memorial Sunday at 3 o'clock and people were calling me so the marinas can sell a tower so these young kids can lay on the beach. And then, you know, watching all come across the shore and, you know, it, it's, um, they, some people think I'm better than God. You know, if, if that's how serious this is, you know, they'll tell you, you know, I live right down the street I've been averaging two hours of sleep. Uh, you know, just worrying and looking at the ceiling fan and wondering what's going to happen tomorrow and praying to God that no more all comes on the beach. So, like Terry said earlier, you know, uh, uh, his wife is sick. I bring seven people a day to Oshkins and Grand and New Orleans in a van to cross that long bridge you cross and, and putting gas in the truck to make sure that we, we keep the help. And we help each other. And, you know, we don't if we don't have the money, it don't matter. We help each other. That's what we do. Well, that, that's uh, that's supposed to be what the entire United States does. Exactly. Is that yeah, what we're, we're not we're not bitter at the whole company for what happens. We're just bitter at those that cut the families and all the that we have right now. Oh.